and Carl Bontes. Can you just go to Neil there? Carl Bontes. On my right hand side of the box, the commentating box there on the stand. My right hand side, there by the camera. Thanks, Carl. We're just going to do a live interview there with Carl Bontes, Kinetic Pro Cycling Team, and Robin Harris of the Asla Cycling Team.
in the Drakenstein area, an area that's well renowned for some massive track talent and untapped track talent. And that's one of the reasons we're here today. And one of the reasons we are uh, very excited to have the event, even though we've uh, had the ravages of COVID, um, absolutely decimating the cycling season across the world, in fact. And it's an, exciting, uh, it's an exciting thing that we can actually hold the event today. It used to be a six day, and now it's gone back to, or gone to a single day. We're here today with uh, Robin Harris. He's one of the protagonists of the event. He's been here four times. And Robin, welcome. It's great to have you here. And um, tell us, we're in the second part of the, uh, the day already. It's the Pulse 6, which is a six-day race normally up until now. But with the ravages of COVID, we've uh, brought it down to one day. And um, Robin, tell us how it's been going so far in the first half. Yeah, it's been, it's been pretty good, uh, even though you know, it's a little few numbers of riders today. Conditions out there, it's, it's pretty hot, it's over 35 degrees. Um, the elite riders are, are still giving it gas, giving it full gas, which is, which is cool. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Compare it to the, uh, the previous events, uh, you've been here four times. Uh, tell us how, what the field was like then, and um, having it all crammed into one day it makes it more intense. Yeah, I think, um, you know, one day racing, all the events is, is it's slightly different. I mean, this is my fourth time. Uh, the, the other three were obviously well attended. Um, some international riders at every single event. Uh, the, 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 the competition is pretty, pretty fierce. Um, look, it's slightly different now. COVID, yeah, um, it is what it is. But uh, the guys are out there having fun, giving it all. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to seeing how Robin and his teammate do throughout the day. Robin, one more question. What's, uh, what events are you targeting for the next half of today? Okay, we've got the elimination left, we've got the longest lap, and then we have uh, the scratch race. So we'll give, it, we'll give it horns in all three. We'll try and maintain. We, we're currently lying third overall, so we'll try and hold on to a podium position for the rest of the event. Now, I think tell the audience a little bit about the elimination race. Uh, it's a notoriously difficult race. You have to keep your eyes and, op eyes and ears open at all times. Uh, tell us about how you will approach the elimination. Cool. So the elimination race is, the concept is last guy over the line gets called off, otherwise known as the devil takes the hindmost. Um, it's an interesting race because, you know, obviously last gets pulled off and uh, it's about positioning. It's about, uh, you know, turning, on, turning up the, the gas in the last sort of two, three hundred meters and just staying ahead of the, the next rider. So, yeah, it can get quite technical. Uh, you can be, you know, taken. It's about positioning. It's, uh, it's a very interesting race. So, yeah. Uh, Looking forward to it. We'll just try and stay up front and, uh, and just not get eliminated, really. That's it. <laughs> well, thank you very much for that insight. And we're looking forward to seeing the guys out there in the elimination and, of course, in the grand finale. Looking forward to the last half of the Pile 6 here on the 19th of December. And a uh, beautiful day out. A little bit warm. I think it was over 35 degrees the temperature reached. And uh, later in the afternoon, the track is known for a little bit of a headwind in the back straight. So. Exciting to see what happens and how that plays a role.
Right, thank you for those interviews, Neil. We're starting with our second half of our Pulse 6 event. All the team riders on the track, please, for your elimination. Pulse 6 riders on the track for your elimination. Then after the, their event, it will be the under 11 boys. Under 11 boys, get yourself ready. And then under 15, under 13 boys and under 17 girls after them. Pile six riders, your team event, elimination. And yes, the event usually, we have six days. So six consecutive days is the Pulse 6, but due to our COVID-19 pandemic, we have a one-day event this year. And after the last event, the winners will be crowned. So for each event, the riders will get points, the teams will get points. And at the end of the day, the team with the most points will win the Paul Six crown. Right, the riders are off. Paul Six teams. So we have the Wilcox, Fury, Pontes. We have Ferguson, Linwell Janssen. He's there. So every second lap, the riders will be, one rider will be called off. The last rider over the line will be called off. And the last two riders will, will sprint for the, for the win. They off. Bontes in front. Furi also there next to Bontes. We have Wilcox there. Hofmeyer. Right, they will get the bell and the next lap we will call off a rider. Bonte is in front. Fury on his wheel. Ferguson is out of trouble there. Who is in danger? Two. Thirteen red. That's Udli Dolly, first rider being called off. We'll get the bell again.
13 black, 13 black. <laughs> right, they're going to get the bell again for the next sprint lap. Last rider over the line will be called off. Hofmeyer, Furi, Janssen, Wilcox. It's Ferguson struggling at the back. It seems like Ferguson had enough. Ferguson, ten red. Ferguson, you off. <laughs> we'll get the bell again. They get the bell now. <laughs> right, who will it be? We have Moses at the back. Wilcox also in danger. Wilcox in danger there. 14 red. 14 red. 14 red. Red Moses. Right, Moses is off. We have now Harris in front. Or oh, is that Furi? Bell. Crispin Furi in front. Teammate Harris at the back. Then we have Bontes. We have Janssen also there. Wilcox. Also Hofmeyer. Hofmeyer moving up to the front. Looks like Wilcox in danger. And also Harris at the back. Janssen. Wilcox, 10 black. Wilcox. Right. Hofmeyer. Then we have Bonte is still there. Janssen is there. Crispin Furi moving up with Bonte. The Asla teammates at the back now.
Right? You also in, move up, move on, move on. You also in, move on. Nine black, you off. Crispin Fury. And the 11 boys, keep yourself ready. And the 11 boys. Right, another bell lap. Another bell lap, Hofmeyer moving up. Janssen, Harris, Pontes leading the bunch. Harris at the back. Who will it be? Pontes at the front. Hofmeyer. Janssen in trouble there. Harris going over. Still Harris in front and Janssen also in second. Hofmeyer, Bontes. Eight black, Bontes, eight black. So three riders left. We have the Hofmeyer of Kinetic and also Janssen and Harris. They will get the bell again. The last rider will, will fall out now. And then two riders left for the sprint. Harris, Janssen, Hofmeyer. Right. I up on the banking, Hofmeyer. In space there. This Harris there so. Four, Janssen, work there so, Samet, Hofmeyer. We can it be us. We can it be us. Janssen. We? There is. Hi, Dus er is daar zo wat net daar in verloren. Zoals hij daar zo voor Hofmeyer en Janssen. Wie gaan het weer? Hofmeyer, Janssen. We speel een beetje daar op die baan. Up on the banking. This will be an interesting one. In the back straight now. Hofmeyer increasing the pace. Still Hofmeyer of Kinetic. Front. Janssen on his wheel. Hofmeyer and Hofmeyer goes first. Can Janssen come over? Janssen is coming over. Yes. And Hofmeyer is coming back. A convincing win for Linwell Janssen. Second place. Hofmeyer and third, Robin Harris. And the 11 boys. And the 11 boys. Then 
Also keep yourself ready under 13. Under 13 boys, under 15 boys, and under 17 girls. You, you also keep yourself ready. We have now under, under 11 boys and girls. Right, one, two. Op die lijn, op die lijn, als hij. Right, four laps. We have Zuri Solomons and also Muhammad Arnold. Zuri has three laps to go, three laps to go in front now, and Muhammad Arnold is chasing. Muhammad Arnold coming, coming through, three laps to go. Three laps, three laps to go. Right, so Zuri in front there. She will get two laps now when she comes through and then we have Muhammad Arnold there chase, chasing Zuri. Zuri coming through, and she will have two laps to go. Two laps. Muhammad Arnold chasing Zuri. Muhammad closing that gap there, and Zuri in front. Yeah. 
We're coming in now for the bell. Zuri Solomon still in front. Muhammad closing that gap. Arnold on Zuri's wheel now. Last lap. Then under 13 boys, under 15 boys, and the under 17 girl. And Arnold opening a gap now. Zuri trying to close the gap. Arnold. Arnold in front. Muhammad Arnold in first place and Zuri Solomon second and the 11 goal. Well done. Under 17 boys, you keep yourselves ready also. Under 17 boys and the junior girl, keep yourselves ready for your next event. We have now under 13 boys and under 15 boys and 17 girls. Stop, 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 stop. On the white line. At the Paul Six banner in the middle. Right in front here we have Cameron Wilk Wilcox and Yahya Martin. Wilcox and Martin. And we have Dolly and Katip and Dolly chasing. Still in front is Martin and also Wilcox.
Right, Katip in front now. Two laps to go, Katip. Dolly chasing. Wilcox also in the mix. So it's Katip, Dolly, Wilcox, Dolly. Yahya Martin trying to close the gap. Fionn Lakay there at the back trying to close the gap. Wilcox mixing it there with all the under 15 riders. So it's Wilcox, Katip, Dolly, Dolly. They'll get the bell. Last lap, Katip in front and Wilcox. Very aggressive rider. He's got a gap on Dolly and Katip. Wilcox still going. Wilcox got the gap. Dolly chasing. Wilcox still in front. Dolly closing the gap. Wilcox, Dolly. Wilcox, Dolly. So Wilcox and Wilcox are under 13 riders. So Wilcox and Dolly. Very exciting racing there by Cameron Wilcox, our under 13 rider, mixing it up with under 15 riders. Well done. And the 17s. And the 17s. The elites get ready uh, for their next event. We have the under 17s about to begin. And we're gonna hear it from some of the riders. See how, uh, see how they're feeling for the race coming up. So just uh, number 101, how are you feeling for, uh, for this race coming up? And how's it been going so far? Uh, it's been going good. And I uh, uh, feel, I'm gonna see how I feel in the race. <laughs> how's the heat going? Uh, it's getting a little bit warmer during the afternoon, a bit of wind picking up. Yeah, the wind is picking up and it's, it's really hot, uh, much hotter than I'm used to. Okay, good luck. Have a good day. Guys are preparing, lining up against the fence, clipping in and holding on the fence, ready for full gas effort coming up. You're watching the, some of the elites getting ready. Uh, competition is getting up, starting to uh, take form. The, uh, the order of events seems to be taking shape, and we expect some white-hot racing from the elites, but first we'll see the under-17s. Right, we have the longest lap here with under 17 boys. And Mr. Sammy Aldin will explain quickly. I want to run the white line. Please, 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 please,
<laughs> so they must not cross the white line and they must do a track stand. But they must not cross the white finish line. Practicing their skills, track stands an important part of cycling. Uh, even if you're a, a road rider or a mountain biker, uh, bike skills are super important no matter what discipline you're doing. Right, now they go for the sprint. It looks like Aris of Red Sport there in front. Colson there also in second position. He's got a big gap on green. And then we have Dwayne Adams in third place. Still Colson there in front. Adams green. Green in second place. Adams. Colson convincingly winning this race with Adams in second and green in third. Fourth we have Hendricks. Well done, boys. That was the longest lap for the under 17th. Six. Longest lap, team event. Paul, six, longest lap. The longest lap, Paul, six. And we're about to begin the uh, longest lap, the Pulse 6, and this is the team event, and uh, the leaders on general classification, we have Weinand Hofmeier, and... We're just going to chat to Venon Hofmeyer quickly. Uh, tell us about uh, this this race, this particular event. Tell us, uh, tell us a bit about it. This is always the uh, most interesting race of the of all. So yeah, let's see how it ends. Well, Venon Hofmeyer and Carbon is they're in the lead right now in general classification of the teams, and uh, two more to go. Let's see how they go. Commissaire is explaining to the riders that it's uh, meant to be a fun game. I'm not sure how much fun it is. 35 degree heat and some fierce competition. But uh, this is what's called the longest lap. And let's see how they pay this one. Well, let's see who's, uh, who has the skills of the track stand. Ponte is playing with his bike. Depends on, depends on the commissary when he calls it. They could be standing for 10 minutes. Let's wait and see. See what kind of a sense of humor the commissaries have today. <laughs> F 
Uri here in front with Janssen. Remember, if they put a foot down, they're out. Cannot put a foot on the track. Number 13, it's Barry Hindmarch. Has to take, has to wait for another day. Yeah, Janssen here at the line, the finish line, Janssen trying to balance. Yeah. Janssen is out. Still Little Ferguson. Janssen crosses that white line. That means that he has to clip out and go back to the pits. The riders have to stay within the two white lines. And anyone close to that white line in front takes a big risk. Moses struggling is out. It's out there. Eh? Moses, you out? Off the track, please. Harris. It was Jamie Moses having to leave the track. Number 14, Red. He broke the rules of the day. Stay still, stay within the lines. And the commissaire must decide when he wants to shoot the gun. Ferguson. Oh, he had enough. He had enough for the day. Crispin Furry, obviously an old hand at this. Good skills. Don't want to jinx it yet, but uh, it's clear that he's been around the track a few times. Perfect track, track stand from number nine, Black. Well, it's the hopping out. technique there from uh, from Carl Bointes. Just saw it there. Let's hope. Oh, and number ten. That's Mark Wilcox. Back to the pits. Four left. Five left on the track. And the gun wins. And Harris struggles. Pontes, Furi. Wilcox there now in third place and still Furi. Pontes on his wheel and Harris catches up. Harris catches up and it goes straight past them over the top. Still Harris coming from, from the back. And Pontes. Harris, Pontes, Harris, Pontes. And a Comfortable win there by Harris. Ponte's in second, and that's Hofmeyer in third place. Well done, guys. Yes, an impressive performance there from uh, Robin Harris. He actually clipped out almost just as the start gun went. A uh, bit of a mishap from him, put him onto the back of that field. And uh, in fact, by default, almost the perfect position to be in on that final lap. So well done to him for uh, keeping a cool head and uh, timing that race to perfection. Now we have our development riders, our two riders with the road bikes. You up next. But we're about to watch the two future talents of the sports about to take the track and uh, I'm going to do a quick count to see how that elite race went, see what the final results held.
Yeah, I'm in the stands here with Robin Harris, spectacular race for him. And let's hear from uh, the rider himself. He's just catching his breath, how that went. How's it? <laughs> Tough. Foot came out in the beginning, managed to get it back in, and then chased on, and then just used my speed as I got back to the guys to pull it through. So it worked out. <laughs> well done, sir. So a good example of keeping a cool head. That's the idea. When you're on the track, the cool rider always wins. And the 11 boys, you up next, come on up, and, and the 11 boys, and go, and the 11 boy, and go. And the 11 boy, and go, you up next. Need me for something? I didn't hear. I'm going to play it by ear. I don't think so. Oh, yep, it's the same side, okay? Okay. Are they. Where are they starting? The one is starting over there because the red one is on a nine. Okay, right, right. This one is on the so you're doing handicap? Okay. Uh, Alaya. <laughs> hey, well done, bro. Thanks. I like it. You see, I'm not track. The track back, man. The elbow. The elbow track back. Okay, you never track, bro. I'm not going to be able to. I'm not going to be able they say again? Well, you're not at the other No, no, no. Not last time. Right, five laps and the 11 boys. We have here uh, Muhammad Arnold and Zuri Solomon and the 11 girl. Five laps of the track. Right, they off. So Ziri Solomon, 
She has a lead on Muhammad Arnold. And she has four laps to go. Four laps. Arnold must close the gap on Zuri Solomon. And she will have three laps to go at the line. Arnold trying to close the gap on Zuri. Arnold trying to close the gap. Two laps to go. Then we have a quick team update. In first place, team eight, Bontes and Hofmeyer, 165 points. Second, team nine, Furi Harris, 115 points, 115. Third team, 14, 104 points, 104 points. Fourth team, 10, Ferguson, Wilcox, 59 points. Then team 13, Eindmark and Dolly, 26 points. Zuri is still in front in this race. Arnold trying to close the gap. Then under 13 boys, under 15 boys, and under 17 girl, to the tunnel, please. Get yourself ready. So Zuri is still in front in this race, so she will get the bell. <laughs> Trying to close the gap. Last lap, last lap for Zuri. Last lap. Muhammad coming through, trying to close the gap. Last lap on it for him. Last lap, Muhammad, last lap. Zuri is still in front. Zuri is still in front. Will she make it? Out of the saddle. Zuri finishing her race in first place and Muhammad second. Well done to the two of you. Well done. Almost there, Muhammad, almost there. Well done. Good. And while we uh, watch the future talents of the sport, I'd uh, just like to remind everyone in the crowd if they could share uh, or get their friends to uh, join the link on YouTube to search for Paul 6 on YouTube, get them to come in, uh, to get the tune in and watch the live streaming uh, on the YouTube channel. And it's Paul 6 is all they need to search for and click the link. The link is also up on Facebook. Right now, we, the under-17s are about to begin.
Sasuke, what's your name? Khatib, what's your name? Say it again. Mikrank. Yeah, we're here with Mikran Khatib here. He's going to tell us a little bit about this race that he's about to do uh, just, uh, just before the beginning. This race is not as you think, and the competitors what I have is super strong. Well, there we go. We uh, got some uh, big respect for the competitors out here. It's a hot day out in Pal open air track, and no doubt the wind is picking up a little bit. We're watching the flags. Looks like a little bit of a, a bit of a headwind on that back straight. Let's uh, see how that plays a role in today's racing. So this is a 10 lap points race, and every second lap there will be a sprint for points. The riders will know that uh, 10 lap point race is a very tricky exercise because you not only have to do big efforts in the saddle, but uh, have to do some calculations in the head as well. How many points your rivals have, uh, when you need to back off, when you need to put in the maximum effort. So it's a mental game as much as it is as a physical game and they'll be making absolutely sure that they don't miss a single beat all the riders watching each other right now pace is slow but no doubt it'll speed up when that bell goes that's when the sharp the senses will be sharpened and they'll be counting in their heads how many points they can make and weighing it up against how much effort they need to make those points up So Dolly immediately out of the saddle and he has a small gap on the rest of the field. Got tip trying to close the gap. Another Dolly in third place. And we also have Wilcox, the under 13 boy there in the mix. And also Fionn Lakay, our goal. Fionn Lafay taking the lead. Katip on her wheel. It's a sprint lap. Dolly in front. He's going to take maximum points. Dolly, Katip. And Dolly. Fionn Lake in fourth place. Then we also have Cameron Wilcox. Bunch now all together and riders are watching each other. Coming now for the bell lap. Okay. Gonna get the bell. Then the next lap will be a sprint lap for points. Katip, Fionn Lakay. And this lap, it'll, all about be, it'll be about who has recovered best from that last effort. And you see it's a little bit slower on that, uh, on that back corner. Let's see how it winds up on that uh, back straight. See who makes the first move. And Wilcox in front. Katip there in front now with... Wilcox in second place, Dolly coming through. 
so Johnny got left it a bit late. Now this is where the mental calculations will have to play a role. Khatib and Dolly will have to work out exactly how many points each other has so they can measure their efforts through the next few laps. Make sure they don't spend any unnecessary effort and uh, play their hand too soon or make too much of an effort and blow up. So we also have the Fion Lakay also in the mix, our goal, and the 17 goal. And also our young under 13 boy, Cameron Wilcox. Riders watching each other. Impressive performance by Wilcox in this race. They're on the bell lap, again watching each other. They'll have made those mental calculations, knowing exactly how many points each of their rivals have. Wilcox there, very aggressive again. A small gap on the bunch. Katip closing the gap. Dolly on Katip's wheel. Wilcox still there in the front. Now is Dolly coming over. Dolly and Dolly and Katip in third place. Wilcox fourth. The two, dolly, right? two dollies there, uh, putting time and or putting points in between themselves and Mikhail Khatib. That spells bad news for Khatib. He'll need to make up some points in the next lap to still be in contention for this race. Dolly still enjoying a gap on the bunch there and and, and Fionn Lakay trying to close the gap. Well done. Some young local talent there coming through in first place now, Fionn Lakay of the local Red Sport team. She's going to get the bell. Lakay still in front. Dolly chasing. Got tip in third place. And Wilcox on his wheel. A clever move by Wilcox there, capitalizing on the fact that he knows that Katip has to make up that space can very easily make the most of that situation. Laka is still in front. Coming for the sprint. Laka is still in front. Wilcox trying to close the gap. Wilcox and Katip. Wilcox challenging Katip. So Wilcox. The young under 13 rider, Katip in first place, second Wilcox, and third Dolly. A good move by Katip there. He's made back those, those points that he lost in the, fight, in the last, or rather the, uh, the previous Prem. And a great ride there by Cameron Wilcox. The riders will get the last, uh, the bell for the last lap now. Got tip in first place. Currently has a small lead on the rest of the field. Wilcox still hanging on. Very impressive ride of the young Cameron Wilcox and Fionn Lakay also. Strong rider, local rider. Dolly on her wheel. Fionn Lakay. Uh, aggressive riding by Lakay there. But uh, there's no doubt that Dolly and Khatib will be watching each other like Hawks. Wilcox hoping to capitalize on that situation. Dolly now leading the sprint for first place. Katip in second. Wilcox challenging. 
Good ride by the young rider, Cameron Wilcox and Fionn Lackey. Well done. Very good ride. Very good performance there, but it uh, looks like a tip. Maybe he might have made a mistake, pausing a little bit before the line, and we just have to see what the judges say about who was second at that final finish line. Next on our program, we have under 17 boys. Under 17 boys, 20 lap points. Here we also have some young talent, upcoming talent in this bunch. Tw 20 lap points. Every four laps, points. We're here with Theo Williams. He's going to tell us what the conditions are out there. It's warm in the grandstands. What's it like out on the track today? <laughs> we are, um, the, like when we practice, it's not that warm here, but, but with the riding conditions now, it's extremely hot. Um, we've never actually trained in this weather, so it's something else. But Thanks very much, Theo. Good luck for today. Right, so we have uh, 20 lap points and every fourth lap, every fourth lap sprint. So you will, you will have five sprints, five sprints. 20 lap points. Colson, Adams, we have also Julius Zé, Aris, Theo Williams, Theo Williams, Hendricks, and Hendricks picking up this, the pace. I think that is Aris on his wheel, still Hendricks in front. And Theo Williams of Red Sport closing the gap. Hendrik still in front. So in a race like today, the alliances between the two, between the riders could play a big role because uh, if one helps the other, uh, it also enables uh, perhaps a little bit of a gap to go, a little group to form at the front there, which is exactly what's happening. They know that the preem sprints are quite far apart, and already we've seen a gap of three, a gap between three riders at the front. They can keep this going. They can start scooping up points very fast. Yeah, it seems they're working together there. It's Adams and also Colson and Green. All of the same, same club, the same team. And they're working together to get a gap on Hendricks. Hendricks has a lot of work to do to get to that thing, but they've really got to Cooperate these three at the front. Can they be absolutely sure of a podium space if they can keep this cooperation going? Critical that they stay working together. They need to stay friends, and as soon as it, they sprint for the line, they need to remain friends afterwards so they can keep that cooperation going. They've already formed almost, let's say, getting up for half a lap now on any of the other riders. Henrik's still gagging to try and get back on. He really needs to get back in touch with these three. And Colson taking this lap with Adams in second place, and then we have Green in third place. They have points <laughs> on the board. Hendricks also gets <clears throat> get points, one point for fourth, fourth place. It's excellent cooperation. They may have an alliance. They may agree to how many points each one gets.
but they know that this cooperation, these three, they can be guaranteed of a podium spot today at this race as long as they cooperate. So Colson doing his part at the front of, of the bunch, of the breakaway group. Green going through. It seems that Adams is struggling a bit at the back. Credit to Hendricks. He's still keeping it on the gas just in case the three riders out front do slow down. But he's also got some riders coming up from behind, breathing down his neck. He has to make a call now. Does he keep the effort up or does he wait? Meanwhile, at the front, the three riders are still cooperating beautifully. They look good. They're, let's say, well over half a lap in front. It's not that easy to take a lap at this particular track. It's a 470-meter track. Other races, other six-day races, traditionally have a 250, perhaps even a 166-meter lap. So it's a lot harder to take a full lap. But nevertheless, a cooperation is absolutely vital. And uh, Hendrix is still pushing on, trying to close the gap. He didn't stop racing now. And in front we have Colson and Adams and Green. It looks like they're going to catch up with, uh, with the rest of the bunch also. Hendrick's still pushing on. It's a bell lap, so they will sprint for points now. At the front, we have Colson and Green, and we also have Adams there, still en enjoying a gap on the rest of the bunch. Those three in front look to be up. They look to be taking that lap on the field with Hendricks still out in no man's land. It's good that he keeps up that effort. Then he doesn't get a lap against his name. Three will be starting to sprint for points right now. And the front three have 12 laps to go. They're nearly at the halfway point on this race. And they look like they've got their positions on the track solidified. The top three podium seems to be secure. As long as they keep co coordinating their moves, coordinating their efforts, and cooperating it's always difficult when you're lapping some riders. There's a bit of interference, and uh, this is where tactics can play a role. They need to pay attention now. What not let someone go off the front. Looks like Colson. Colson. Colson's off the front. Very clever move there by the man out front. Didn't accelerate usually. He hasn't made a big effort to get out front. Just sneaked away. Bit of extra power on the pedals when he noticed the others were slacking off a bit. And uh, he's made the absolute most of this. Probably got almost 100 meters on the rest of the field. Okay, we have a few rules here in the points race because the, the three caught the bunch. They got 20 points, each of them. And our new leader now is Hendricks. Okay. So Hendricks is the leader, so he sprints now for first place. So um, Adams, Colson. And also Green, they each got 20 points when they caught the bunch. And Hendricks sprints now for first place. And Ethan Colson will sprint for second place at the moment.
Right, Colson coming through here. Eight laps to go. So he's in second place. And we have Hendricks now sprinting for first place. So Commerce, he says now that if Hendricks, Hendricks catches the bunch, he will get his 20 points, then Colson will sprint for first place. So Hendricks, he is closing the gap at the moment. And they have six laps to go. They have six laps to go. Then our junior lady, she is also riding a good, good race there on the wheel of Adams. And behind Mark of Kinetic Cycling on the wheel of Adams. That's our junior lady. So Hendricks must catch the front riders to get his 20 points. He must catch the front riders. So Colson, we have him as the leader now at the moment. Colson is the leader in front. And Adams is at the moment second. Third is Hendricks. Hendricks and Green. Adams in second. Colson is in first. On the track now. We have first aid there at the back. First aid. There's two laps to go for the leader. And this is where it really starts playing a role, the conditions in an open air track. If it's hot, the uh, elements do start playing a role in one's performance. And you can see it's just not quite the same intensity. Uh, the rider in front, Mr. Coulson.
So you actually must know the rules if you want to ride this race. So Colson now in front here, then we have Adams there in the yellow jersey, he's second on the track, and then we have Hendricks in third place, Hendricks and Green. So final lap now just has to last one more lap, and then that pain, all that effort uh, will, be, uh, will be worthwhile. Adams got points here, and then Green in third, and Hendricks will get points for fourth. Well done, under 17 boys. Then we also have our young lady here of Kinetic, Amber, coming through. Right, we're not, not going to start now, John. We're first going to do that. They're in the back straight. Okay, John, I think the riders can roll. They can roll one lap, John. John, come now, John. Oh, that's it. We're just about to get to the the big one, the open scratch race. Not only will it be the uh, elite teams fighting it out for that general classification, and it'll be uh, a larger field with some more riders in the mix.
Just a quick update on the general classification with the elite teams. It's team number eight, Bontes and Hofmeyer, with 165 points. And at 115 points, Faree and Harris. And in third spot, Janssen and Moses with 104. So the top three, all to play for. Right now, they're just taking a warm-up lap, just taking it easy. It's a scratch race, so winner takes all at the end. There are no points, no preems in between. So it's all about the tactics up until the line. There are no points until that very last finish line after 40 laps. Okay, this is the final race of the day. So can all riders who are finished now, can they bring their numbers to the registration table, please? Then after the last race, we will have the prize giving. After the last event, we will have the prize giving. Thank you. All riders, bring your numbers to the registration table, please. So the gun's gone, and uh, there was a bit of a rolling start there. They didn't have to hold onto the fence and uh, wait for that gun to go. They had a free lap, get the bike, get the the uh, legs going, and uh, immediately on the front and super aggressive. The race is already on. It's Van on Hofmeyer on the front. It's already forming a bit of a gap there. And this could be a very early decisive move if the others don't react very quickly. It's four at the front. And there needs to be a very quick closing of that gap. Jamie Moses looking to get in contact with that front four. Hofmeyer again very active here at the front and Harris on his wheel, Ferguson, we have Janssen also and Pontes. Now we can see in the second group there of three behind, we had Crispin Porter taking the pace at the front. Now, it's not the same as having a road team where winner takes all, where it's okay to have one winner. This is a points race. Every point that Crispin Furry earns is adding to the tally of his team. So very important that he cooperates with all of the others to reduce that gap, or at least to close the gap. Some more aggression there from Venant Hofmeyer. Keeping it well under control, Robin Harris. The experience of Robin Harris winning him the previous race. I think it was the longest lap, almost clipped out, almost ruined his chances, but the cool head kept him going. And it's uh, standing in good stead here in this group of four, cooperating very well, managing their efforts. I see it's Wilcox now bridging the gap there to the front bunch. And we have the Pontes, Janssen, Hof, Hofmeyer, and Harris at the front. Wilcox taking advantage of that. Just slight low on the pace. Very big effort to get in. So he'll sit at the back, just trying to recover. The others won't expect him to work. But uh, come a lap or two, he will be expected to pull his weight.
Wilcox suffering from his effort. You can see it on his face, just hanging in there, waiting for that second lull in the pace. Went very aggressive. Robin Harris not letting up for a second, keeping the pace high, keeping it all honest, knowing that gap is super valuable. Could all come down to these five riders. I think it's Bontes and Hofmeyer of the Kinetic team trying to get some hard racing in here and they're in front and making the race hard. Bontes and Hofmeyer are the only team that, that there are, these two teammates are together at the front. They will earn maximum points even if they come third and fourth. With their lead in the general classification, this is a perfect position. They can afford to put maximum effort in. Even if they come third and fourth in this group, they will still win the overall. Chris Benferi and uh, Jamie Moses just catching back on to Wilcox. They're going to have to just measure their efforts, keep it up. Ferguson off the back. But we have 32 left to go, 32 left. And the uh, leading four riders roll through with a quarter of the race done, 30 laps to go. And at the front we have Janssen, we have Bontes, Hofmeyer. <whistles> Bontes taking in a, an attack now again. Hofmeyer on his wheel and also Harris. Bontes and Hofmeyer are teammates, so they are earning maximum points from this group. Uh, at the end, when they, if they've all finished together in this group, they will earn the lion's share of the points, which will stand them in good stead for the general classification. They are in the lead already. Riders without teammates in this front group of four. Robin Harris and Lindwell Janssen. There are only 11 points separating team lying in third place and team lying in second place. Second place, Safari and Harris, and in third place, Janssen and Moses. It all depends on which of these two riders, Harris or Janssen, who wins the, who beats who in this final sprint in the scratch race.
See the three that have just passed through the finish line, the start finish line. That was uh, Jamie Moses and Chris Furry and Mark Wilcox. A bit of a surge there, hoping to catch there. That was uh, Lindwell Janssen hoping to stretch the elastic and put the other teams under pressure. He knows that he doesn't have two teammates in that front group playing his cards. So the leading four have just caught that uh, trailing three. And this is going to be an interesting set of affairs and how the tactics play out with three of these riders in this big group, one lap down. Just before the start, we heard the riders joking that uh, this is a scratch race, so they s were joking that this was going to be a neutral zone for the first 30 laps, but it absolutely has not happened that way. Very early aggression put four riders out front, having already lapped the three in that group right now. So the riders effectively out front are Carl Bontes and Vaynerd Hoffmeyer, the team that are in the lead right now on general classification. In that front four, Included is Linwell Janssen and Robin Harris. So we have 21 laps to go and Hofmeyer riding a very aggressive race with his teammate Carl Bontes and we have Janssen in front and also Harris. Then after this, this event we need under 17 boys, Zarif Green, Dwayne Adams and Ethan Colson. In your cycling gear please, in your cycling gear on the field and then under 15 boys, Ikshan Dolly, Miran Katip, and Tazrik Dolly. Under 13 boys, Cameron Wilcox, Yahya Martin. Under, under 17 girls, Fionn Lakay. Under 11, Muhammad Arnold, 
Judy Solomons and Junior Amber Hindmark Development Muhammad Yakin and Faraz Katip can you be in your cycling gear on the field after this last e last event please See Linwell Janssen at the front, just keeping the pace high. Watching out for any possible breakaways. Any aggression in the pack could lead to another split. Riders are tired. It's been a hot day. It's been a long day and uh, very intense. With uh, all six days crammed into one, it is normally a six-day event. And uh, due to the ravages of COVID, it has been reduced to one day, which means for the riders, it's all or nothing on this particular day. Another aggressive move there on the front. It's going to be up to the other teams to chase. Van ah. Hofmeyer taking up the pace, just keeping that gap, knowing that it is a very long lap. It's a 470 kilometer lap. Very difficult for a rider to take an entire lap on their own, especially with uh, two teammates keen on keeping that cooperation going, keen on keeping their advantage. They have a numbers advantage. There are two teammates, two leading teammates, Carl Bontes and Van Hofmeyer in the overall GC. They are in the leading lap. Just a little bit of stretching of the pace. Robin Harris keeps the pace up, testing out his rivals just to see who has been a little bit stretched, who's hurting. And yes, he's just managed to, that small move has just created a bit of a gap. He knows that uh, his teammate, Crispin Furry, will not chase. That will leave, that leaves Bontes to chase. He, Bontes will have to close that gap on his own. If the three in front can continue to cooperate, that puts Bontes and Hofmeyer, the duo, of, the duo that are in the lead right now in GC, that puts them under pressure with Bontes caught behind 50 meters back. Well, it looks like Hofmeyer was keeping the pace even. It is not really in his interest to push the pace too hard. It's all up to Janssen and Robin Harris to keep the pace high. A little bit of a heart and mouth moment there for uh, Carl Bontes. The gap has been reduced, but look for the counter attacks. Ben on Hofmeyer putting the pace high at the front again. Maybe putting his teammate under pressure. Let's, not, let's see how that pans out. His teammate will have put a lot of energy in just to close that gap. And uh, Hofmeyer will want to Rather just uh, play it easy, let uh, the others make any moves. It's not up to him to stretch the pace now. He is in an advantageous position with his teammate with him. The team of Jansen and Moses, the third team on overall GC, are at a disadvantage now with uh, Jamie Moses caught behind. There is a gap. He has lost a lot of time. It's unlikely he'll be able to close that gap on his own. He's been on his own in the heat for quite a while now. There's a big move from Bontes. That puts the other teams under pressure. We're but <coughs> Jansen having a technical there with mechanics. That's the a technical. big pity for Jansen. He'll look for... He'll look for his team, quick crew, has, to help him out laps, there. Three laps, yes. 
to fix his mechanical. He'll need to get that repaired very quickly. Right now, just the franticness of uh, him running to get a new wheel. He has three laps to fix that, and he can join without any penalty. The kinetic team, very aggress aggressive here in front, and Harris still on his wheel, on their wheel there. Hofmeyer attacking again. Harris marking every move of this duo. He doesn't have to necessarily uh, follow every single move, but he's watching very closely, keeping that second place of theirs on GC very safe. Duvain Anfri has made an attack. He's got about a 40-meter gap. Let's see how that plays out. Bontes is not going to help Robin Harris to close that gap. It will be up to Robin Harris to keep that gap under control. I think Hofmeyer is gone here, and Bontes won't help. It's up to Harris and Crispin Fouri to close the gap there. Yes, luckily Harris has his teammate with him. They will work together. Their uh, friends and teammates, they'll be able to close that gap or at least keep it under control. And Janssen is ready to go. He's ready to go. Ten laps to go. I think Hofmeyer is gone. He's got a very comfortable gap there on the rest of the field. Nine laps to go. Still Hofmeyer in front. The vein on Hofmeyer, very smooth effort. He knows he's got a long way to go. Nine laps on his own. He knows it's a big effort, so he'll need to meter out those watts perfectly. They don't have watt meters on their bikes. They don't have, uh, they don't have power meters. It's not allowed in track racing. So it's all about the rider, all about measuring your efforts and knowing exactly what your perceived exertion is, how far you've got to go. Whereas behind, there were some cooperating riders. Behind him directly, behind Hofmeyer, is a rider who has been lapped. He will not interfere with this pace. Jamie Moses is the rider, number 14 red. He's behind uh, Hofmeyer one lap back. And uh, they've got to defend their third spot on overall. Now, we've just seen Linwall Janssen. He's had a bit of a mechanical, so he is back in the fray. He's going to be super aggressive. He's uh, got a lot of frustration and uh, also a little bit of rest. So the others who've been out there in the heat are at a bit of, dis bit of a disadvantage, and they'll need to get on terms with him very soon. Hofmeyer still in front, and Janssen trying to close the gap. Seven laps to go. Just there with seven laps to go. We saw Linwell Janssen deciding up to, to wait for the group behind him. Knew that seven laps on his own would be a tall order, especially to close that gap. It's almost half a lap now in, up to Venon Hofmeyer, who is in the lead right now. Benon Hofmeyer crosses the line, six laps to go. He seems to be in a good rhythm right now, measuring his efforts in this heat. There's not too much wind today. We've seen windier days in this open air track. It's a long track. The back straight has in the past shown up some headwinds, but he'll know all about that. Some good cooperation there in the group behind with uh, Crispin Furry and Robin Harris, with all to play for.
The rider just about to be caught by this group of four is Jamie Moses. That would mean he's two laps down, and uh, their hopes of going up to second place overall seem to be dashed with Crispin Furry already lapping him. And that puts the team of Crispin Furry and Robin Harris in a very good position, looking to defend that second spot overall. But definitely the team to beat is still Carl Bontes and Venon Hoffmeyer with Hoffmeyer way out front. Now Hoffmeyer enjoying a comfortable lead now. And with four laps to go, it seems that he will eventually win this uh, scratch race. Now we're just watching the behavior of this group here, this group of five. Uh, with Jamie Moses on the back, he's uh, been lapped twice by the uh, by Vernon Hoffmeyer. Hoffmeyer looks to be aiming at perhaps lapping the field once more on his own. That would be an impressive achievement. Let's see how his uh, efforts, how he's paid for his efforts in the last uh, seven laps. Looks to be motivated and uh, his pace is still high. If there's a lull on the pace at the front, it looks unlikely that he'll catch them, but uh, who knows? Let's watch out to see how motivated uh, the likes of Jensen and Harris are. Hoffmeyer is just driving. He seems to be making up meters every single. He's already lapped. Uh, he's already uh, lapped Jamie Moses. He's uh, got the others firmly in his sights. It's clear that his goal is to lap this field one more time. His teammate Carl Bontes not making the biggest effort. He would love to have his teammate win this, and uh, taking a lap on this would be would pretty much seal the deal for Vernon Hoffmeyer. Fantastic effort on the final event of the day. Robin Harris just yeah, making it just a little bit more difficult for Vernon Hoffmeyer, but uh, we'll see what uh, the next 300 meters holds. We know that the last 100 meters of this race will be a sprint. Let's see if there's a lull. If there's a lull, then it looks highly likely that Vernon Hoffmeyer, yes, he could be, he could be taking that lap. An impressive performance from Vernon Hoffmeyer from Kinetic Pro. Interestingly, they let him go. They just go straight through. They know he's got the win. It's all about sprinting for second place now in the scratch race, the open scratch race, the final event of the day. Fantastic Vernon Hoffmeyer Hoffmeyer. has won. The others still have one lap to go, one lap to play. But Vernon Hoffmeyer has won the final scratch race of the day. Bontes on the front. He knows that his team has won the overall general classification of the Pol 6 in 2020. Now he could just sweeten the deal with a second place, a 1-2 for the team. Robin Harris very keen, very much on that wheel, on the ball. But Linville Janssen looking very dangerous. He's got the perfect position. And it's a drag race all the way to the ocean. Linwell Janssen. Linwell Janssen takes second place. And uh, we'll need to see what the commissaires say, but it looked highly likely that, uh, that Carl Bontes was in third. Fourth place, Robin Harris. Good effort from all the riders. Fantastic race. Very exciting. Very early aggressive moves. And uh, check on what that big gap in GC was. It looks very likely. We haven't seen the final count back, but in all, unofficially, we could say that Carl Bontes and Vernon Hoffmeyer have won Pile 6 in 2020. Uh, well done to those riders. Good performance. And then can we have the under-17 boys, under-15 boys, under-13 boys, under-17 girl, Fionn Lakay, and the 11, Muhammad Arnold, Zuri Solomons, Junior Women, Amber, Heinmark, then Development, Muhammad, Yachim, and Faraz Katip. Can we have you on the grass, please? 
Under 17 boys, Ethan Colson, Dwayne Adams, Arif Green. Under 15 boys, Tazrik Dolly. Miran Katip, Ikshan Dolly. Under 13 boys, Cameron Wilcox, Yahya Martin. Can we have you on the grass, please? And that must be in your cycling kit, please. In your cycling kit. We're going to try and catch up with the winner. Uh, Venon Hofmeyer made it look so easy in the heat and uh, with the aggressive racing early on. Let's uh, see what Venon Hofmeyer, the winner of the final stage, the final race of the PAL 6, sealing the deal for his team. Venon, impressive performance there. Tell us a little bit about the beginning of the race and how that all played out. What kind of a team, uh, team tax did you have in the beginning? Well, we we started at first place, so we had a lead on them. So we decided on 20 laps to go, we're just going to go flat laps. And my teammate, I couldn't do it without him. He kept them back, and they couldn't come past them, and I just opened up. That's how it, that's how it ended. So tell us about that last, uh, the last seven, seven or so laps. When you're out, you had the gap. You knew you'd, uh, you'd split the field, you're on your own. Tell us how you felt and how you kept up the effort for those uh, final seven laps. Basically, it wasn't much competition today, so we basically do training for essays. So after I saw I can, could, can close the gap, so I just put the hammer down and close it. So your aim was to lap the field? Basically to win the lap and yeah, <laughs> to win the race. So how does this position you for uh, track essays coming up? Basically, uh, we have lots, a lot, lots to train, working on the sprints, the powers, maybe go on a lighter gear, and yeah, see how it works out. Fantastic. Well done to you and your teammate. You did a fantastic race. Winners of the Paul 6 in 2020. How does that feel? That feels amazing. Great. We're going to catch up now with the Robin Harris, the protagonist in the race, a very aggressive uh, right at the front where it really counted. Uh, looks like he's still getting his breath back. We're going to give him a bit of time. But I think, uh, just tell us a little bit about your first impressions, what it was like with uh, some of the best racers in South Africa. These guys are monsters, man. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was good to chase after them for, uh, what is it, six or seven races today. Uh, guys are uh, kinetic, we've got some nice form. It was hard racing. Um, guys did well today. How impressive was that ride at the, uh, in the last lap by uh, Venon Hofmeyer? Tell us what you were thinking uh, when you saw him right away. When he put that final, uh, that final nail in the coffin, it was like I couldn't respond to that. And uh, he went off, and Carl was just like, okay, cool, well, you guys need to chase this. And uh, it was a perfect sort of one-two by the two of them. And uh, it was well executed, and he stayed away. Uh, there's no legs to go after him. Uh, well done, Venon. Good ride. Some good tactics there, and uh, let's. Uh, we, what about next year? Are you planning to come back? Absolutely, I've been here from the beginning for the Pal Six, myself and Crispin, and we'll be back again next year. Hopefully, uh, it'll be no COVID and the full the full uh, event and uh, crowd. Hoping for the full six days next year. Hoping that uh, life in uh, general returns back to normal. And thank you very much uh, for entertaining the crowds. Robin Harris, great effort by you and your teammate, uh, Crispin Foree. That was a good second place there by the team. And uh, we're expecting to see more next year. We're uh, hoping to go back to that full format to replicate the races in Europe, the famous races, the Ghent six-day, Rotterdam six-day, Berlin six-day, London six. Uh, it's a massive sport in Europe. And... Uh, we are very lucky to have the PAL 6, the first six-day race, official six-day race in South Africa. Looking forward to seeing the race grow and continue going from strength to strength. We're still on the line here. we have uh, going to have a chat to Carl. Just hear what his uh, impressions of the race were. It, uh, it was a perfect day for you guys. You were in the lead. You were in the lead in that, uh, that, that group of four. 
Tell us uh, how it played out for you. Um, yeah, like it was good that we could stay consistent during the event. Uh, I think we were second in the first first event, and then Vainan did well in the points, and then from there it was just staying consistent. And yeah, that helped us get the win today. So your name's gone on that record book uh, forever as the winners of the 2020 PAL 6. Although it was only one day, it's, you're still the winners of a very prestigious race. Six-day racing is a prestigious title. Any six day is a pre prestigious title to have. Any plans of going overseas and uh, testing your legs? Um, yeah, definitely. But like first, I'd like to uh, justify um, going overseas by getting more results like today and also like against uh, stronger guys like the guys from Joburg and with a more, um, a, a stronger field in depth and then we can think about going to Europe maybe in our winter in their summer, so yeah. Fantastic effort there and uh, any, the, you missed out on the Madison today, it would have been a good display of, uh, of some, some track craft, uh, it's a pity you didn't get to show it. Uh, what about your essays title, tell us about your ambitions for the, for, uh, for the essays coming up. Um, well, uh, the main goal is always you go to SS to win a title, so uh, in any endurance race, um, the points race when I'm on good form um, is one of the races I like because it's hard all the time. It's, you have to be at the sprints all the time and need to be in the front to gain that, that lap and that 20 points, so that's the main event I'm targeting. Um, but the scratch race, I always also like to um, go there as a former African champion in the scratch race. That's uh, also another title I would be aiming at. It's a prestigious thing to win a national title and a, also a pre prestigious thing to win a six-day race. Congratulations to uh, Carl Bontes. We're about to uh, have the prize giving, and before we have the prize giving, before we see some of the uh, younger riders going up on stage and collecting their due rewards, we're going to have a quick chat to Crispin Furry. Tell us, uh, Crispin, well done today. You got, uh, you saved the day. You saved second spot. Um, you had a really good uh, longest lap, even though it was meant to be a fun race. You made up some good points there, you guys. Uh, tell us uh, a little bit about your rivals today. Well, the heat ma played a massive role. It felt like my head is boiling <laughs> and uh, I couldn't breathe a bit. But I, as the race is getting longer, you're getting used to it. Uh, can't believe it, but you do. And the wind picked up a bit, so it cooled us down. But the racing was nice and hard. Guys wanted to race. Even if it's not a big field, we're still competitive till the end. <laughs> Good to hear. Even though the, uh, the ravages of this uh, terrible pandemic have reduced uh, racing in South Africa to uh, a very... It's a limited uh, calendar, certainly, and um, it's good to hear that the racing is still hot, still hard, and uh, nevertheless, a second spot, a podium spot for a six-day race is still a prestigious title to have. Tell us, will you come back again next year? Yeah, definitely. Me and Roman been here from the start, and we'll keep on until we you know, can't race anymore. <laughs> Any ambitions for uh, essays in uh, one month's time? Yeah, we're still looking at it, me and Robin, to go, but uh, our main thing is road. Uh, we want to go on the road. Uh, it's just, in, just like two weeks later, so it's becoming a, uh, what are we going to do? Yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, We can do well, I think, they at uh, our age cat, 44 to 49, so yeah. 
it's uh, track racing, it, attracting some uh, riders from different disciplines, and a very important part of any rider's development is track racing, and that's uh, one of the big things about this particular event is that it's building uh, character through sport, and that, in fact, is the title of Kevin Green, the founder of Pile 6. It's his initiative, Character Through Sport, uh, tapping into the talent in the Drakenstein area, and, in fact, in the Western Cape. A very good initiative there, and uh, worthy to support tapping into some uh, remarkable explosive riders. We look forward to seeing more in the future. Okay, thank you, Neil. Thank you for that, uh, those interviews there. Um, okay, can we also have um, Team 8 here on the grass, Carl Bontes and Wayne and Hofmeyer, and then also Team 9. Robin Harris, Crispin Fury, and Team 14. That's Linwell Janssen and Jamie Moses. On the grass, please. Right, development. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, development. Can we have on the podium here Muhammad Yakin and Faraz Katip on the podium? Nice round of applause for them. On, uh, keep on your mask. Well done. Right, thank you. Then on the 11th, can we have Muhammad Arnold and Zuri Solomons on the podium? Well done to you. Round of applause to them. Thank you. Okay, then we have the under 13 boys. We have in second place Yahya Martin. Well done. On the podium. And first place Cameron Wilcox. Well done. Cameron Wilcox. Oh, he's coming from the front. Right, excellent. Then the under 15 boys. In third place, Ikshan Dolly. Ikshan Dolly. Third. Second place, Miran Katip. Miran Katip. And first place, Tasrik Dolly. Well done.
थैंक यू थैंक यू देन अंडर सेवेंटीन गर्ल्स फिओन लखे एक्सलेंट राइड ऑफ फिओन वेल डन Well done Junior ladies Oh no okay. Yes okay, okay. Uh, Junior ladies we have the Amber Heinbock Well done to you Well done Then the under 17 boys in third place Arif Green Third place Second place Dwayne Adams Dwayne In first place we have Ethan Colson Well done Right then the Paul 6 team competition in third place we have Lenwell Jansen and Jamie Moses 132 points 132 points well done Lenwell Jansen Jamie Moses just remove the cap please Then in second place we have Robin Harris and Crispin Furi with 141 points. Well done. Well done. and convincingly winning the Paul 6 event is Carl Bontes and Weinan Hofmeier with 201 points team kinetic team kinetic team kinetic well done to an excellent ride Another round of applause to them. Thanks for excellent racing. Well done. And thank you to all spectators for supporting this event. Thank you for your support and have a blessed festive season and be safe. Keep your social distancing and be safe.